Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, it's not often that I get a bunch of my viewers to send me a link to the same video over and over and over, but such was the case this past week on a video that had to do with a potential trap in the pistol brace rule, specifically as it relates to the background check and an automatic denial that occurs after 88 days. Now, I am not doing a video to claim that that video was wrong. I am not saying that in any way, shape, or form. But one of the things we try to do here at Washington Gun Law, and we're going to try to stay true to our mission today, is we're really picky about not telling you how to think, but giving you the stuff that you should think about. What weight you attach to it, what it means to you, well, that's for you to decide. And I think that when we take a look at this pistol brace rule and the big fiasco that it is, it is important that we slow down, do our research, and make sure that we are considering all the things that we should be considering. So today, let's spend a few very important minutes and talk about some other stuff to think about on this 88-day pistol brace trap. Okay, so the issue we're talking about is an issue that's gotten a lot of people really, really worried, and it is entirely possible that this issue is in fact the case, and if so, it would be in fact one of the biggest traps ever set in the history of the United States, and it would be one of the most nefarious plans ever. Now, if you recall, we did a video on September 11th last year, this video right here, and we did another video on September 16th of last year where we did talk about what we perceived to be some of the traps that were built into this pistol brace rule. Now, some of that video was operating under the old premise on the form 4999. But one of the things that we pointed out in this video right here, clear back on September 11th, and was brought out in the video that we're discussing today is, is the fact that I do not understand how on a form one, if you in fact are doing this normally, you would not be able to assemble the firearm until you have your tax stamp approved. You may have all the components necessary to do assembly, but you do not get to do final assembly until of course the ATF has given you their blessings, all right? What ATF wants you to do here in this new amnesty form one is go ahead and take a photograph of the firearm. Of course, many of you are just gonna plop it on a table and take a photograph of it in its absolute complete format, completely configured, put together, assembled, whatever you want to call it, and you are now giving them evidence that you possess what they believe to be a short barrel rifle, of course, without the existence of a valid tax stamp. That is a trap that I do not get, and candidly, after going through all 292 pages of the rule, I do not see that addressed anywhere else. What I want to talk to you about today, though, is this 88-day trap, and I think there's more things we need to consider. So what I want you first to understand, and I'm sure most of you do, and many of you probably have already registered NFA items, so I want you to draw back on your experience dealing with NFA items. There are essentially three forms that we may need to fill out, federal forms, that we need to fill out whenever we are purchasing or acquiring or making a firearm, and the form will depend on what we're doing. We know that we have ATF Form 1, and that is the form that we use if we are making, manufacturing, or assembling an NFA item, okay? And what we're talking about in terms of the pistol brace rule is we are talking about short barrel rifles. If you are assembling, manufacturing, creating a short barrel rifle, you would need to fill out a Form 1 to be able to lawfully possess that firearm in addition to go through all the other background checks and pay the correct taxation. Now, there is an amnesty period during this pistol brace 120-day amnesty period where you don't have to pay the tax. But that is the form that we use when we are manufacturing an NFA item, okay? Now, if we are just going to purchase an NFA item, that is, we find a short barrel rifle right there on the shelf that looks awesome, I want to take it as is, or many, many of you have done this with suppressors already, then we fill out an ATF Form 4, 
Okay. And this is a little bit more straightforward, but for whatever reason, even though the form is more straightforward, it takes a tremendous amount of time. Now, if we go to ATF's website, and again, granted, take this for what it is worth. Okay. But we will see that the current wait times, according to ATF for either form ones or form fours is approximately two months for a paper form one or 60 days for an e form one. And for a Form 4, if it's submitted in paper, it's taking 12 months. And if it's being submitted electronically, it's still taking 6 months or 180 days. And what the concern, of course, is, is that there is this rule out there that says if a background check takes more than 90 days, it is automatically comes back as a denial. And that is true on a Form 4473. So now, listen, we've talked about a Form 1 here. We've talked about the Form 4 here. Now, on a Form 4473, which is the form that we fill out when we are acquiring any other non-NFA item, okay? So, Form 1s for manufacturing or assembling an NFA item. Form 4 for purchasing an NFA item as is. Form 4473 if we are purchasing a firearm that does not fall under the purview of the National Firearms Act. Now... When we fill out a Form 4473, that's right, the FBI, Department of Justice, NICS, all of them will run a background check on you. It is going to come back one of three ways, either approved, denied, or delayed. Now, let's talk about that last category, because if there is a delay, what ATF says is that there is some information out there that might possibly match you to a prohibited person. It is not a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I actually, for whatever reason, get delays all the time. My delays take somewhere between two to six hours, and then I usually get a call back and it's time to go pick them up. I have no reason why. It just seems to happen every single time. Here's the thing, is on a Form 4473, there is a specific rule that states that if it, a 4473's background check is delayed for 90 days, then it shall be deemed an automatic denial. And there is a code of federal regulation, specifically 28 CFR section 25.9, which says that any data that the ATF Department of Justice accumulates on 4473s must be purged within 90 days. And what the Department of Justice does to ensure that they are in compliance with this rule is they purge the data on day 88 or two days before they have to do it. So yes, it is possible if we are going through a form 4473 and somehow or another we have a delay on that background check that we would get an automatic rejection after day 90. Now I know what some of you are saying is, is okay, but after my form one or my form four is approved, I still need to go fill out a 4473. Yes, you do. You do need to fill out a form 4473 because that is the document that is actually going to show the transfer of that NFA item to you. Okay. And when we go to pick up that NFA item, there is not a second background check that needs to be conducted on the form 4473. It's not like you have to go through a background check to go through a background check. The form one, or in some instances, the form four background check is sufficient. And if you look on form 4473, section C, question 28, it specifically gives the FFL the option to state no NICS check is required because a background check was completed during the NFA approval process on the individual who will receive the NFA firearm as reflected on the approved NFA application. So even though you're filling out the Form 4473 to establish that you took possession of the item, the FFL is not required to run an additional background check on you, which theoretically could get caught up in that 90-day window, and thus you end up rejected. But if we had a 90-day automatic rejection on all Form 1s, would we not have that same 90-day rejection on all Form 4s? Does anyone think for one second that the ATF is conducting an entirely different type of background check scheme on Form 1s than what they're conducting on Form 4s? 
they are conducting the exact same background check for everybody who is applying to own and possess an NFA item. All of you who have already done Form 4s probably have stories about that taking much longer than 90 days. Some of you have stories about it taking as long as a year or more. At no time was your background check ever rejected because it timed out. There are, uh, granted, fewer stories, but I have heard stories from FFLs that I spoke to over the weekend where Form 1s have taken longer than 90 days. Now, it's not as common as the Form 4s, but it does happen. And in no instance was did that Form 1 get rejected because the background check had timed out. Now, if all of this turns out to be true, and it very well could be, because we have to consider what we are dealing with here, then what this is, is this is tantamount to a level of entrapment where you would then force individuals by federal mandate to turn over evidence of their unlawful possession of a firearm, but give them an amnesty period by which they could make sure that they were not unlawful individuals, but then intentionally set up a system so that no person would qualify or ever be able to get through the system in an appropriate period of time. That places an illegal impossibility on anybody and one that the courts likely no matter what court is going to tolerate. It is entirely possible that the trap that was discussed in the video of our discussion today is entirely true. However, it is equally possible that there may be much more to it and we all need to take a moment, take a deep breath, let's research it together, let's figure out what this is all about and let's come to an answer together. We know this pistol brace rule has a ton of problems. We know this pistol brace rule is flawed in many, many ways. Let's figure out how many ways it truly is flawed. And if this, in fact, turns out to be one of them, well, my friends, we have ourselves a serious problem here, don't we? Listen, you may have more questions about this pistol brace rule, this 88-day trap, or anything else related to what's left of your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com, or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, in the meantime, let's remember... Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Laws, to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.